In this video, we want to prove or establish each of these identities here. So let's look at some of the identities that we could use here. The first one, of course, is a Pythagorean identity. The first one tells you that if you have the square of cosine of an angle plus the square of sine of the same angle, that's going to equal to 1, always. I'll be using that one. The next one tells you that if you have the sine of twice an angle x, that's going to equal to twice the sine and the cosine of half the angle. So notice it reduces the 2x to x. Sine, instead of sine of 2x, we have two times the sine of x, cosine of x. Next one we have some double angle identities, or another, so I should say another double angle identity. Cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And the other two that I have here are actually derived from the first one, simply using a substitution for cosine squared over sine squared, you get the next two. And the one that I'll be using is the last one here. Cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And in the solution of the identity, I'll be going from right to left. So notice how I have this part right here. I have it in this form. That, that should give me cosine of twice whatever this angle is. So let's go to the first one. So normally you start with one side of the identity and show that you get the other side. Start with the left side, show you get the right side, or start with the right side and show that you get the left side. Generally you always want to start with the more complex side because you look at the right side, you, you got one. What are you going to do next? You can still do it, but it's a little bit more involved. So let's start with the left side. So we have sine squared of x and then we have 1 plus cotangent squared of x. Now we don't want to put equals to 1. We want to show that it equals to 1. So my next step would be continue here and of course use any identities that you can apply here. I know there's something equal to cotangent. Cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. So since we have a square there, this would be the same thing as cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. Now it's just algebra here. So I'm going to multiply through here, here, and over here. Obviously sine squared of x times 1 is sine squared of x. Multiplying the next expression, notice I have a sine squared here and sine squared of x in the denominator. Those are going to cancel out. And that's just going to give me cosine squared of x. Again, here I'll be using the identity we just looked at. Anytime you have the square of sine of an angle plus the square of cosine of the same angle, doesn't matter, doesn't matter what order these are, that's always going to be 1. That's all this one involves. So that's the solution for that one. That's the proof for that one. Now for the next one, notice in this one I have a left side here, 1 minus 8 sine squared of x, cosine squared of x is equal to cosine of 4x. And notice I have the argument on the left side is, is just x. The argument on the right side is 4x. I have to increase the argument from x to 4x. And that's what I'm going to use the last identity that I pointed out. So let me start off here with the left side again. The more complicated side, generally you start with the, the more complicated side. Not always, but in most cases, that will work best. So I have 1 minus 8 sine squared of x and then cosine squared of x. The thing about identities is you always know what the answer is. I started with the left side. I need to get this. So that's my answer. So I need to rewrite this then. I'm going to rewrite it this way. One minus and put a 2 right here and this will be a 4 then this will be sine squared of x cosine squared of x do the same thing just rewrote it notice that the minus 2 times the 4 gives, still gives me the minus 8 still have the sine squared there the cosine squared there so then i'm going to continue here and rewrite this again so now this one here in the parentheses parentheses here, I'm going to write that as, uh, i write this as 2 sine of x cosine of x. And then I'm going to put a square here. 
that's the same thing as what I have up here. Because if I square the 2, I get the 4. I square the sine, I get sine squared of x. Square the cosine, I get the cosine squared. So that's the same thing. And then here I'm going to use another identity. In the parentheses, we know that this is one identity we looked at, double angle identity. We know that the sine of 2x, or twice an angle, is equal to twice, or two times sine of the angle. It reduces the argument from 2x to x. This will be cosine of x. That's why the first, I think it's out, this was the first identity for the second one, I think. The first one was the Pythagorean identity that we looked at. So that means that in the parentheses, I can replace 2 sine x cosine of x by sine of 2x. This is still squared. So then this is equal to 1 minus 2. And then I just squared here. This will be 2 sine squared of 2x. And this is the last identity that I mentioned. From here, Anytime you, anytime you have it, an expression, a trick expression written in this form, exactly in this form, 1 minus 2 sine squared of double the angle here to x, that's going to equal to the cosine. And let me say it this way so it's more clear. Any Anytime you have an identity that looks like this, and the form is 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of, I'm going to set an angle here, because this could be any angle. The, the thing you have to remember is that if it's in this form, this will always equal to the cosine of twice, or two times, whatever this angle is. So in this case, it's 2x. Now, had this been 5x here, then this would be 2 times 5. So this would be a cosine of 10x. So in our case, and what we're looking for, we're looking for a 4. So it's 2 times that angle, and we get the 4x. Doing trigonometry involves knowing your algebra. If you, have a, if you have a good foundation in algebra, you can do trigonometry. But there are going to be a lot of identities. Some the instructor will expect you to memorize and know. Some you can derive. But here we're done with the proof of both of these identities. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.